This video goes over differences and differences or how economists handle natural experiments. Now the key with a natural experiment is that we're looking at something that changes at a specific point in time. And I'm making up this example for fun, but imagine that we implement a school lunch program at some particular point in time, <clears throat> call this 2006, and we want to know, did that program have an effect on students' BMI? One key in a natural experiment is that you have a control and experimental group. So you have one school, or maybe it's a number of schools, who are implementing this school lunch program in 2006, and then you have another set of schools that are not implementing any program in 2006. And the key with the control and experimental group is that they need to have the same trend over time. So that's why I've marked these lines as all parallel lines. It's the, the same trend over time. And that, that's the tricky thing with the natural experiment, is that it's taking place at a particular point in time. And we know that there's lots of things that happen over time. Many, many different things happened in 2006. This was not the only national change in 2006. This was not the only local change in 2006. So having that control group allows us to, ch to control for other trends or other changes that might have happened in 2006. The econometrics for differences and differences are going to look like this. We're going to have our response variable is BMI, and that's of course on the y-axis here. And then we've got an intercept beta naught. We've got beta 1 times time. So this is going to represent the time trend, since we have the same time trend for all these graphs. That's going to represent this um, particular slope. That's going to be beta 1. The beta naught is going to represent the um, y-intercept for the control group, so this is beta naught. Um, and the reason for that is because our next variable, beta 2 here, is going to be associated with our experimental group. So that's going to be the adjustment on the intercept if we're experimental, meaning the experimental group might have a different starting point. In this case, our starting point is actually below um, beta not below the control group. So in this case our beta 2 is going to be our addition to beta naught. In this case beta 2 is going to be negative because be because the experimental group starts at a lower point than the control group. So this intercept here is actually going to be beta naught plus beta 2. It's our, our base intercept for the control group plus the adjustment for the experimental group. And then our main variable of interest, the variable that actually ex establishes causality in this case, is going to be beta 3. And beta 3 is going to represent the adjustment that takes place after the school lunch program. So of course after is, um, is every time after the whatever change we're trying to address, where, where this is before. And after times experimental. So we're only capturing this after effect for the particular experimental group. We're not capturing it for the control group. So beta 3 is going to represent this distance here, beta 3. And of course, if we wanted, we could project that back onto this axis. I'm not going to do that for now. But of course, beta 3 is the main causal variable at play. Th this is capturing what is the effect of the actual school lunch program assuming that any anything else in the economy that's happening in 2006 that's not related to the school lunch pro program is also happening to our control group. And that's a pretty strong assumption, which is why differences and differences is not at the top of the food chain among our identification strategies. But it's still a pretty good identification strategy. If beta 3 is significant, that still is a decent case that um, our program cause some effect that we're seeing in the data.